Hello, y'all. It is Vincent. And it's that Real Vinny Van channel. Yep. It's been a minute since I've talked to you. And I'm doing this again. This is like... I mean, anytime I get going and making a good video without any edits... It seems like a lot of times now I'm doing something where I need a timer. My timer goes off. It stops the video. Ah, I'm on a, I'm on a time frame here. My first uh, appointment this morning is nine o'clock. I'm at the laundromat doing towels. I didn't have to do it, but I decided to just do it to sit here and make a video. Anyway, all that being said, hi. I miss doing this. I've made several videos, but I have not posted them for one reason or another. If you're new to the channel, this is Real Vinny Van. I talk into the into the phone. I don't. I never plan on making edits on this channel. I try to practice sometimes, and I'll put a little, you know, music at the front. I haven't really produced anything greatly yet. Um, my desire is just to be honest and real and share my life and my journey towards uh, getting down the road basically and the more I say this the more bored I am of hearing myself I've done this is my third video my third take this morning I'm doing laundry at the laundromat I'm sitting in my mom's car uh, a lot has happened in the last couple weeks this really has been the, the hardest, most depressing, difficult two years of my life. And I don't want this to be a downer video. I really don't, but I gotta share with you what I'm going through and what's happening in my life. And um, of course, you know, my whole goal for this channel is to just be honest with y'all. You know, this is my life. I talk about it right now. I'm not doing a lot of traveling and I've seen a bunch of landscape, you know, looking at, you know, bodies of water and the streams and lakes and oceans right now. Um, I'm in my town where my shop is. I got a barber shop. Um, I do really well on months that I think, wow, this sucked. I had a terrible month. I, I, add, I add it all up at the end of the month and I go, wow, I've had the best couple months that I've had ever the last couple months and it's been the hardest time of my life I have been just hit by a lot of emotions I lost uh, I lost my father-in-law died suddenly just a week ago and that's my ex-wife's dad who she been living with since we separate since we broke up and got divorced totally unexpected terrible 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 it's left her in a real jam where she's got to work her way out of it and every penny is going to just living and building her new business that she started and probably wouldn't have in hindsight knowing what would happen if she knew she probably would not have opened that shop but now she's in it she's you know she's got that bill she's working another job she's trying to afford life you know and I'm the divorced guy I'm you know I didn't divorce her it was something that she needed to do apparently to move on with her life and even though we neither one of us cheated or abused each other we just had a hard time getting along and um and she decided to end it. So I'm this outsider guy who I love her dad. What a great guy. Super, super guy. Very supportive and loving to his family. And to all of us. And it was just a sudden, a sudden thing. And she's going through it right now. And it's natural to want attention and not be alone in the same house that you've been living with your dad, you know, for the last year and a half. And now suddenly he's gone you're in the same place i understand i'm in the same town that i was in six years with my ex-wife and with her and uh 
I can't go anywhere. This whole town, it haunts me. You know, I'm hurt by it. It's a great little town. I make great money, but it hurts being here. And it's, I feel like it's just detrimental to my soul. I've just had such a ridiculously hard time. So, and at every corner, I try to put on a happy face and be joyful and realize that it's such a great place and I have such a great opportunity and I'm making the money that I need, but I'm on this hamster wheel and I can't get off it. It's like, you know, the little hamster's just going and going and going and going and going and getting faster and faster and faster and then trips up a little bit and stops and stares, looks around a little bit. Okay, we'll do this again. Hamster wheel, I'm on it. Are you on it? Is that what's happening to you? Are you stuck? For me, I mean, most people wouldn't even think about leaving the job that I have. It would be like, you're insane if you're leaving that job. You're crazy if you want to leave that. Not me. I'll walk away tomorrow, tomorrow. But I know that the hamster wheel is a productive thing. You gotta live. You gotta eat, you gotta have a cell phone, you gotta have insurance, you gotta have gas, you gotta fix your car. You need to be able to sleep somewhere. Everybody's got that life bill. Even if you're in a van, traveling, you need gas, insurance, upkeep on the van, cell phone, Wi-Fi, unless you're just living off of coffee shops. It's needed. So even if you're van life, you gotta have money. And so I put on a happy face here and I started a YouTube channel because I felt like this is a legitimate opportunity to start and build something else that I don't have to depend on a barbershop and sitting still and cutting hair every single day to make a great living. But it was an opportunity. It felt like I was watching Think Media and Sean Cannell. He's always saying, this is a real legitimate job opportunity on many world lists and surveys youtube is listed as a legitimate job people make millions on youtube it is not a joke and so to me yeah i can't do that to me the opportunity to take my personality and put it on youtube i thought i could do this i see other people with thousands and thousands of subscribers that do nothing they have the driest personality not even funny or anything and they're doing it they're making it there's really dull people making a living on YouTube and nothing against dullness or no personality but you know what I'm saying it's like good for them I'm not against anybody and you know everybody's different I realize that and it's okay do you but I'm saying that for me, I feel like I have the kind of personality that can translate to a YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, not high on myself at all. I don't feel like I have a whole lot to say, but I'm not, I don't know. I guess I'm silly enough is what I'm saying. That I feel like I can be successful on this channel and eventually gain 100,000 viewers. And that's exactly what I intend to do. I haven't been on for two weeks because I've had death in my family I've been up most nights, all night, no sleep. My whole diet thing, I've been on and off. Emotions flying, sadness. Um, you know, my mental state has been beat up in the last year and a half, two years. I am telling you right now, it is hard, the situation I'm in, it is hard. I'm, and I know other people have it harder and there's things happening. I'm just dealing with my own stuff and you know, I'm not belittling anybody's situation. I think that we all have our stuff and we all have to go through stuff and we have to, uh, we got to deal, find a way to get through, pick ourselves up and move, move on, do our thing. And this channel started so that I can basically, you know, map out and share my journey toward being a van lifer and then on the way i started learning you know van life isn't really life it's a i don't know long vacation where you happen to have a makeshift place to stay and sleep and eat and be 
and it allows you to travel around, you still need to make money. And I see people that have taken off and they just don't have a lot of money. And they'll run out and they'll say, I gotta go back and go to work. Well, for a barber, that's tough to do. You gotta build a client base. Unless you're lucky and you find a shop that's just so busy, you can just go to work and make money right away. That's not usually the case. So leaving my client base and this money that I make behind for van life without having a ton of money saved, that's scary. But it's not about money for me. Like the YouTube channel that I dream of, the success, the payday that, you know, get sponsors and the whole thing to be able to run a channel and make money so you can do the things you want to do with whether it be build a house or start a homestead or go van lifing all the time you know the bottom line is we, we all want freedom we want a little bit of freedom we want to get off of this hamster wheel all of us do and if I could have trillions of dollars I would just go around picking people to free from it. But a lot of times that money, that's, that's, you know, having riches, it doesn't change anything for you. If anything, it could make things worse. I saw Jordan Peterson the other day in a video that he shared and he said, I know a ton of rich people and they're rich and compared to poor people. They have, but they have all the same issues, you know, they have life, the same life issues, health and wellness, joy, happiness. If they struggle with depression and sadness, loss, just like we do, they have more money to get out of situations. I can tell you right now that my depression, my sadness is directly related to cash, to money, to not having the ability to pay for things like $30,000 dental work and um, just the things you have to have to be healthy and successful. And I have, I make good money, but you know, when you have all the overhead and the other things and you know, everything's falling apart, it's hard to afford those things. When you don't have credit, there's lots of things, but rich people, they can just, their car breaks down and buy another one or put that one in the shop or rent a car. Their bills are never late unless they're just being lazy and irresponsible. They don't have the stress of not having money. And that is a big deal. And that's really life for everybody. We all struggle and have stress. And so for me, it's been the money thing. You know, I have major dental work I need to be have done, you know, and, uh, this has to happen. I'm also a guy who loves security and sta stability. I love, I want a little house. I want a little piece of property. I want to have a bathroom and a shower and running water and a toilet, kitchen, living room, dining room, bedroom. I, even if it is a one bedroom studio, I still crave stability like all these van lifers do. They all eventually are now homesteading, building cabins, building houses, staying mostly in homes van life is not over there's still lots of people who van life the new era of van life F and N, and you know you know karen and nate got a van for a while you know but in essence people that tune in and subscribe to these channels they're just looking for an escape you know they see people living a different life a more free looking life and it appeals to them it appeals to me van life totally appeals to me getting a cabin and homesteading somewhere out building something that appeals to me that's why all these travel channels and these van life channels and these homestead channels you know off grid with jake and nicole they have a million followers subscribers they make a really great living and can do whatever the heck they want on their property and travel when they want. I, they don't travel a lot at this point. I think Nicole's pregnant now. Huge, huge followers. My Self-Reliance, two channels going really great. Mav, one million followers, sleeps in the back of his truck, 
travels around, fishes, hunts, makes $300 burgers on his tailgate. One million followers. What is it about these channels that we want to follow and and just subscribe and, and give to? You can do a number of things on YouTube, personality or not. It was like an opportunity, I felt like, for me to do something different, make a living and gain new perspective, heal up. I didn't want to just sit in my van and stare at an ocean. I wanted to walk and jog and ride my bike and get healthy and spend my time pursuing health and God and goodness and happiness and joy. That's where I'm going. That's what I want. That's why YouTube. But I'm miserable where I'm at. And I know that I can change my attitude and just stay and be good. But I feel like there's so much history here. And so much sadness. It's hard to escape it. It's like hanging around with all the wrong people that just bring you down. If you don't just change your circle, man. You're just going to continue to feel the way you do. It's going to wreak havoc on your health. And your life in general. And that's not what I want anymore. I can't do it. But I also find myself in a situation where I don't know what to do. If I leave, I don't have much money. And I have the life bill. I have the, the bills that I need, that I, that I have to pay to breathe. You know? Food and gas, insurance, telephone, cell phone, internet. Coffee. No, I don't need coffee, but I do need a couple things with the van. The van's been in the shop for, by the time I get it back on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, it'll be over two weeks. It was supposed to be a four day deal. Four days, no communication. I got one phone call the day before it was supposed to, the day that it was supposed to be done. One phone call and I lost, I had to cancel my week vacation. I had to stay and work. I was so bummed out on top of all this other stuff that's happening with the death and <sighs> had to cancel my vacation. He didn't even call me. He just went on his Saturday, Sunday weekend and just didn't say a word. It's not going to be done. Nothing. He promised it would be done on Thursday. It wasn't done. This Thursday came and went. It wasn't done. I even went and got the part so they could have it and work on it all day and he didn't get it done. He didn't call me. It's a three day weekend. Now I'm not going to, who knows, they're, I don't think they're going to be open on Monday. So they'll be back at it Tuesday. Hey, no phone call. No, hey, we didn't get it done. Sorry. Nothing. Just, we're not done. Don't even bother. We'll be back Tuesday. It's the worst customer service I've ever experienced. And this job is turning out to cost me It's under four thousand dollars. So I got a car that I put four, five, six, seven. I got a thirteen thousand dollar car uh, at this point. It's a two thousand eight Toyota Sienna, and I put work into it. It's going to be a great car as long as he does a good job and this thing got done thoroughly and and was done right. It's going to be like a new car, you know. It ran perfect. I only had put it in the shop because I needed that, that valve gear to be fixed. And it turns out I had to fix all the valve gears, the timing chain, the tensioners, all that stuff had to be done. There was no escaping it. Could have bought a dang new motor for that price. But the motor was good and it ran perfectly. I, I went ahead and I put it in the shop thinking I was gonna get it back in four days. Nope. It'll be over two weeks by the time I get it back. Costing me $4,000, a trip all the way out to Austin to get the part for him so he could finish and he didn't finish or call me. It's some crazy stuff. It's just crazy. No garage works like that. Who, how does anyone stay in business when they don't communicate with their clients? Not even one phone call. Not one that told me anything except, hey, yo, we found out the timing chain is stretched. We need a timing chain. I'm like, I'll go get it. I went and got it because they said, 
there's two trucks that next day and who knows when we'll get the part. We can't finish that day if we get it at noon. So I went and got it and delivered that those chains to him at 5 a.m. in the morning or 8 a.m. in the morning. He had the chains, he had the parts, did not finish, did not call. I told him I had a three day weekend, I needed the car. I'm borrowing my mom's car right now. And luckily she's allowed me to do whatever I want, but it's not the van, I can't go camping. So life is hard, right? Boo hoo, Vinny doesn't have a van to go camping in. Oh my gosh, poor thing. I know, I'm just saying, it's very disappointing when somebody just disregards you in your life and you've told them and they promised and they didn't follow through. Didn't even say sorry, hey, couldn't finish it. Just terrible, terrible. And I get to pay top dollar, high end money. I could have done that anywhere and probably got a lot of phone calls and communication, you know? So now I'm without a car this weekend of my own to camp in. I can't really do any camping like I thought I was gonna do again. I've lost a week and a holiday weekend and money that I've taken off because I had to reschedule and take the notes off of the website because I was going to be away so I lost days and uh and money so none of that stuff they care about nobody cares about your stuff but you take care of yourself you can't depend on other people like that it's just you gotta when you deliver a car for repair you gotta be willing to just say Anyway, I was talking about the rich guys. Did I get off on a tangent? I must have. Jordan Peterson. He said, would you rather be old and rich or young and poor? And Jordan said, I'll be young and poor every day of the week. You know, you cannot discount the importance of stability, of family, of relationships, of just life experience. You throw away so much time chasing after money, after riches, and you just become old with money and you, all your relationships have rotted, fallen apart. You have nobody, and that's across the board, the story of many wealthy people. And there are a lot of good wealthy people that have a great family and they were, they were good people. And I understand that. But for the most part, rich people, they are too busy chasing after wealth. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want it. I don't need it. My heart is to be happy with what I see around me, with my family, with the people in my life. I want to be happy. I want to experience joy, see things I want to see, experience things. And when it's all over, you want to be able to say, wow, what a great life, you know. But right now, the last couple of years, in the last 20 years, I haven't felt good. It's time to be healthy, to be happy in my heart and soul and have joy that doesn't go away. You know, joy that you can share with somebody and they can, it reverberates and it comes back to you and you enjoy life, not because of money. But again, in some way we have to always be on that hamster wheel making that money somehow and thank God for things like YouTube that allow you an opportunity to use what you got tell your story live your life in front of people and gain support you know that's what this channel is about so I just want to thank you guys sorry about the downer video and just the, uh, the just blah it's just man Pray for me, guys. I know this video is going to help me get up a little bit better and feel better today. Just thank you guys for subscribing. 76, 77 of you. That 77, I think, is going to hit soon. And uh, awesome. I know it's not a lot, but I appreciate every single one of you. For some reason, you decided that it was... There's something that you saw here that... Um, Made you want to click subscribe, which is just great, man. I don't underestimate that decision. I think it's awesome that you did that. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking the videos. Everything helps towards getting through that algorithm and put my videos in front of a lot more people so that I can finally hit the numbers I need to, uh, you know, to get this thing going. 
And uh, what I've thought more and more about is uh, the Patreon. I have a Patreon channel, but I haven't, I gotta look at it and see what the, I think it's Rovini Van. But anyway, um, I thought about having the other channel, uh, uh, Vincent Still Dreams as the channel that I monetize and I get, um, put all the edited videos on. But I'm thinking more and more that this could be the channel where I'm just real and I push everybody to the, to the, um, Patreon because, you know, I do need support and, uh, the sooner that I can get even the, a small amount, like, you know, the, if I can cover my basic needs, I can get traveling and making those cool videos and doing the things that I've dreamed about doing. And I know it doesn't take thousands of people to do that. I don't even have to have the numbers that YouTube requires for monetization. It's just the thing of, you know, even the 70 something people that I got going over there and to see the videos that I do or even just support the channel and get me on my way. That would go a long way. So I'm, I'm working on that uh, and uh, thinking about just posting all my videos over there and this kind of stuff here. So, uh, of course, when this channel hits 100,000 like I want it to, it will be monetized and it will earn uh, money for uh, advertising and things like that. That's going to be the job that I do. That's the job that I want. So, I've got most of the equipment that I need, so I won't need a whole lot to maybe batteries and chargers. I do need a, a solar battery that's at least 2,500 watts to run my blender juicer and the things that I'll have to bring with me to have a healthy lifestyle out there. Um, I still dream of it. I still want to do it. It's not a permanent thing. I don't plan on living in my van forever, but the more comfortable it could be and get over time with finances, uh, like, uh, you know, Chrome, Van City Van Life, that guy fully pulled it off and he built from nothing to something anyway i gotta go crap i'm running late you guys love you thank you so much like subscribe let's keep it going i'll keep you up to date say a prayer for your boy Vinny, and i'll talk to you soon thank you so much